Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. Thanks for joining me. You can see the title that I currently have on screen here. There is an option in this software that's extremely useful and I've used it many, many times while creating audiovisual sequences. Yet that option is not turned on by default. I'm not entirely sure why that should be. I feel it should not only be turned on, but it should also be boldly displayed with an appropriate tooltip. When we are creating an audiovisual sequence, there will almost certainly come a time when you're going to want to swap an image or a video clip that you've already used in your slideshow and replace it with a different one. The problem is we may have precisely synchronized that image to the soundtrack. We may have adjusted the transition style and or the length. We may have animated the image or video that we need to change or we could have even created the parent and child animation. Now at first glance it does look like to replace one of those images or videos we'd have to recreate all those settings, but we don't. Now as you've been viewing here, I've got a few images that I've put together for this little demo. I'm gonna to touch the F6 key, which is the equivalent of going down to the bottom right of the screen and switching to the timeline. I'm just going to go to my music here for a moment. I'm gonna right click and choose to mute this because I'm gonna put my cursor up here and show you what we have. Now I've started this little sequence off with a little bit of video as you can see. But the next image that appears on screen you'll notice that I've increased the fade. And this one is a static image but it's gently zoomed outwards. The next image again it's got the standard two second fade but you can see I'm zooming the image and moving it marginally to the right. The last image in the sequence before the blank is parent and child. So this is the image that's animated, but connected to it as a child is this one. So there's the scenario we're working with. Let me stop that. What we're going to do is to open up our settings. We're going to create the button that we need and we'll demonstrate how you can change any of these without losing any settings whatsoever. So what I'm going to do here, let me just select something a little bit more attractive to look at in the MIDI player, but what we need to do is to go to the settings at the top of the screen, choose preferences, and here we need our toolbars. We get quite a number of options in here which are not ticked. And I think it's worthwhile you taking a look down these and see if there's any others that you may find useful. But the one that I want to draw your attention to is this one. Change image or video file. And as soon as I tick this, you'll see it appear up on the top right next to the preview button. So once we click OK, that setting that we can see up at the top right will remain there until we decide to remove it. And I would suggest you leave it there because you're gonna be using it more than once. Now, if you look back at the top right of the screen, you'll notice that the label is change image file. So when we select an image, that's the label we're going to have. But when we go to a video, you'll see that it changes to change video file. So let's assume we want to change this video here. We want to retain the video duration between that and the next image. We certainly want to retain the transition style and the length. So all we need to do now is to go up to that top right, click change video file and navigate to the one we want. The one we started with is 0447. So I'll just select this one and open. Just give it a second or two. There it is, it's been replaced, but it hasn't changed any of the settings whatsoever. Now, of course, we can do exactly the same with this image. Remember with this image, we zoom the image out 
So when we select the image and change the image file, I can choose any one of these. Let's just pick this one at random and click or double click in this case, which is a little bit speedier than selecting an OK. But now we've got exactly the same animation and the same slide duration. We could do exactly the same here, but I'd like to draw your attention to this one. Because when I select this image and we go to the objects and animation screen, we can see this is parent and child. What that means is the image I've called replace four, which is the one you can see here, is the image that's animated. There you can see the first keyframe. There you can see the second keyframe. But this image is the child of the parent. If I show both of them together by holding the control and selecting them, there you can see the parent, which is going to be animated. There you can see the child. So at the first keyframe of the child, if we go to the animation tab, we'll notice that the opacity is zero. So between around five and a half seconds to eight and a half seconds, the opacity comes up to 100%. But maybe the second image that I've chosen here is not really appropriate. We're losing not only the base of the tree, but the top as well. Well, if we close down the objects and animation screen, and I do exactly the same here as we did before. Let's select this image. Back up again to change image file. And what I'll do is I'll select one of these images that we've not used at all. Replace six. Now it has replaced the main image, but it hasn't replaced the child. Of course, it doesn't know what we want to choose yet. So when we select this and go back to the objects and animation screen, if we have a look we can see the image has been changed but we've still got the one we originally didn't like too much to change that we have to come into the objects and animation screen select the child here go to the properties at the top and we can change it in exactly the same way from this option so here I can select the second of these let me close and we'll take a look now I think I've lost my mute here, so I'll just right click and mute that track. Put my cursor in that position and press play. So there we have exactly the same animation, transition, slide duration, parent and child that we had before, but we've replaced both of the images. A great feature, I would suggest you turn it on. Now, while we have this change image video file at our disposal, I would suggest you tick all of the boxes in the settings, preferences, toolbar option. That way you can see what options you have. They're very easy to turn off if you find you never use them. Now, in addition to this change image video option, it's also a very good idea to save your project file with different names throughout the creation process. It does give you access back to previous versions and these files we're saving are very small. Create as many as you like. I'll see you next time.